Hello everybody and welcome to this sixth text fabric tutorial. In this tutorial we are going to introduce you to the BHSA database structure that will help us to understand our queries better and improve our queries and get quite sophisticated in um, our query writing and more precise. Um, so we will be able to find exactly what we are going to look for, or what we're interested in. So here's the table of contents of our uh, notebook. So first I want to show you or um, kind of inductively explore the different values that are available in the ETCPC database uh, by looking at Shibank and running some queries. Then we are diving into the database structure itself, get a general overview, then have a closer look into the database and then uh, try to see where we can find all the codes for values, features and and object types and uh, then we are going into a practice section and going to search for some verbal valences okay good so um, of course first we want to do our basic loading of functions uh, text fabric and now here I'm loading the BHSA that's etcpc database BHSA version 2 2017 that's the latest, um, the latest canonical version, so a stable version, um, which is not going to be changed. You could also load the C version, which is the latest um, up-to-date version that's getting updated uh, every week, I think, uh, once. Okay, but we're having the 2017 version. I also loaded my extra features. Um, <clears throat> okay, good. Now. Uh, let's pull up here Genesis 20 in uh, Shibank. Um, so when we go to
or notebook. Um, so once we have looked up our values, we can see that, for example, Vyctol X is one of the class types that appears in Genesis 20. So we could not just simply search for Vyctol X classes in Genesis chapter 20. So we look for verse, that's our object type, then the feature book provided the value Genesis and the feature chapter provided with number 20. So we find Genesis 20 and within, within Genesis 20, we find the clause type is vital X. How do I know how to write type? Why not like this? Well, that information I got How do I know how to write this vital x value? I could have written it like this, or why not like, like this? Well, you have to be precise. You really need to get the code from the database. So I. Go to our notebook and run the query. Here we go. We found all Victon X clauses in Genesis 20. Obviously, I'm just showing the first five. You see that I color coded the second line two. That stands for second. This is our second line. I color coded that line. I could give it a different number. Let's say yellow. Now it's yellow. Magenta. Now it's magenta. Okay. Let's imagine we're searching for proper names like Abraham, Abimelech, Sarah, and so on. They all appear in Genesis 20. Um, how can I search for proper names? Obviously, I need the code. I give you here a list of all um, codes that are available for part of speech. SP is the abbreviation for part of speech. So we could click here and now we get to the SP part of speech. So you need to use this code SP. And then here you have the different SP part of speech values. You could search for articles, verbs, substantives, or proper names. Here we have NMPR proper names. Excellent. So let's go now to our notebook. And we could now say, let's search for all words with the feature part of speech has the value NMPR, which is proper names. So it should now show us all proper names in Genesis chapter 20. Yes, there are 29 proper names or so 29 occurrences of proper names. I'm just listing here the first five results. So we have Abraham, Kadesh, Shur, Gerar, Abraham, and so on. Right, if I would show more, we could we would probably also get uh, Abimelech. Here we have Abimelech and Sarah. Uh, yeah. Okay, good. So. Then I have a first task for you. Um, search for the explicit subjects in those vital clauses in order to find the right code for phrase functions, go here. So I just provide you with the link. You could just go to that link, um, open it, copy paste it, open it here. And now we said you're supposed to look for all subjects in vital X clauses, subjects. So you wanna find the phrase function subject. What's the abbreviation? This is the abbreviation. So basically go back and alter this query so that you find subjects. Um, we could now find, once we have done that, uh, we could say, let's find all cases where Sarah appears, um, oh, where, where a subject phrase is con Taint by just one word. So we don't want Abraham uh, uh, or, uh, so, sorry, we don't want to find Elohim Yahweh. We just want to find Elohim in, in the subject phrase. Or we don't want to find uh, Sarah Ishto, Sarah his wife. We just want to have Sarah 
as a subject phrase. We do this by using this relational operator. We learn more about relational operators in our next query, in our next uh, tutorial. But this basically means that this word needs to start, this is the first column, needs to start right where the phrase function subject starts, and it needs to end right where the phrase function subject ends. So basically it means the subject phrase can contain can contain only this one word. Okay, so let's see what we get. Here you see Vaisa Misham Avram Arza Hanegev and it pulled out from there Abraham earthwards the Negev um, that Abraham is the only word of that phrase. No other word appears within the subject phrase. Okay, so of course we could now load, export this into pandas, uh, load it as a pandas data frame and then do a count of all subjects that appear in Genesis 20. Um, so five times Abimelech, four times Abraham, two times Elohim. Um, interesting, you see Sarah doesn't appear. Sarah is absent as an actor. Sarah is absent as an explicit subject in all of chapter 20. That's quite interesting. So we could now say task two, something for you. Go to Shibank and look for how the lexeme of Sarah looks like. Then search for all cases in which Sarah appears in Genesis 20. And then try to answer the question, in what syntactical position does she usually appear? Obviously, she doesn't appear as a subject, as an explicit subject. In what other syntactical functions does she, does she usually appear? So that's a second task for you to do. All right, good. Let's step into the third section here of this um, notebook, namely understanding the database structure. So what you see here is that um, we have three categories that are all interlinked. We have object types like a verse or a sentence or a clause or a phrase yeah, or a word with different object types. And each of these object types has features. For example, the object type verse has the feature book, chapter, verse, or the object type phrase has the feature type function and so on. Or word has the feature lexeme, gender, number, person, state, and so on. And each feature has values, obviously. And the feature book has the value Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and so on. Chapter obviously has number values, or think of about the word. Gender has the values masculine or feminine, or number has singular, plural, dual, and so on. So this is how the database is structured. Uh, that means we can now always look for an object type plus its feature, plus its value. In this case, object type word, we want to search for the feature lexeme having the value Abraham. Now we find all Abrahams. Or if we want to find the object type phrase, the feature function with its value subject, we now will find all subjects, subject uh, phrases. Or if you want to search for the clause object type and there the feature relation, what clause relation does a clause have? We want to define that relation as attributive. attributive. We want to find all attributive clauses. Run this. Now you see each attributive clause is, um, is uh, highlighted in, in red. Okay, or we want to find an object type and that object type verse should actually have different feature values. We want of the feature book the value Genesis and of the feature chapter the value 1 and of the feature verse the value 1. So that means we are looking for Genesis 1 verse 1. Here we go, we have chapter 1 verse 1 shown here. I'm using the show option. Obviously, you can also show, uh, choose the table um, option. <clears throat> okay, so and then you can combine different object types. 
In this case, you can say, I want to find a word within a phrase, within a clause, within a verse. And that word should consist of the lexeme Elohim. It needs to be part of a phrase, that's a subject phrase. And the subject phrase needs to be part of a clause, that's an attributive clause. And this clause needs to appear in the book of Genesis. So here we go. Here we have 14 results. I'm just showing the first two. You see a share clauses, so it's a relative clause. In that relative clause, we have a subject phrase. And that subject phrase consists of the word Elohim. So which it created God, which it did Yahweh God. Okay, so we understood the relation now between object types, features, and values. Object types, features, and values. Let's have a further and even closer look at the database. So when you look at the database, um, you see you can display it in different ways. The so-called CTT file is now displayed here first in its um, uh, with its Hebrew font version and then here in its transliterated version. So what you see here is exactly the same as what you see here is just here from right to left with Hebrew fonts and here it's from left to right with a transliteration. Each line consists of a clause or to be precise a clause atom. So you see the information is always the same. When you look at the fifth clause, that's a direct speech, and it said Abraham to Sarah, his wife, my sister is she. Now that's a direct speech. You see, we have a narrative text, and within the narrative text, a quotation appears. Exactly the same structure can be seen here. A quotation, achoti hu, or he, ketiv kere, issue here. Um, this quotation is built up on the narration. You see we have each line a clause and then we have the in these square brackets these are the phrases. So this is conjunction phrase, this is predicate phrase, this is a complement phrase, this is a subject phrase, this is a locative phrase. Here we have the clause type information. This is Vyctol with explicit subject, this is a Vyctol without explicit subject, Vyctol zero. This is a nominal clause. You see also the clause dependencies. Um, you see here that this Vayomer is dependent on Vayisa Misham, therefore Vaiktol X dependent upon Vaiktol X. Um, this is the beginning of a narration, that's why you have an N, and this is the beginning of a quotation, that's why we have this Q. This is a paragraph marker. We always receive paragraph markers when we have a Vaiktol X, when a participant is either introduced or reintroduced. Here we have the information, person number, gender information of the verb being used. Obviously, this is a nominal clause, so there is no information about person number, gender of the predicate. Okay, good. So how is this information that we're seeing here actually encoded in the database? Um, well, here it is. So if you... cannot make it much bigger so let's copy this out and let's open this in here we go now this is bigger so you see that we see exactly the same text that we that we saw here. Um, so those those lines, Genesis twenty verse one, Vaisa Misham Avraham Artsa Hanegev, and it pulled out from there Abraham towards the land of the south is exactly what we have here. Va in transliteration. Vayisha Misham Abraham Arza Ha Negev. That's the first clause. Now, if you look at this super long table, and this is not even everything that's contained here, you see that um, each line 
consists of one word, va-i-sha, for example, va-i-sha, so that would be here, yes, nasa, from nasa. Okay, if we go to this line, you see the lexeme, lex is nasa, nun samech ein, and that's the verbal marker. This is our graphical prefix, yi sa, eh? and this is our third singular masculine graphical representation of the suffix. Then here you see the marking of the verbal class, of, of, of the word class, of the part of speech. This is obviously a verb. So then you see that vaisa is the predicate phrase. You see, first we have a conjunction phrase, then we have a predicate phrase, then we have a complement phrase, then we have a subject phrase. It's exactly what we have here. A conjunction phrase, a predicate phrase, a complement phrase, a subject phrase. After the subject phrase comes a locative phrase. So let's see, here is our locative phrase. Yeah, And then comes again a conjunction and a predicate. Here, a conjunction and a predicate. So here we have the phrase information. And then we have clause information. So this means that all these cells above vital x con uh, build the vital x clause. So the last phrase within that vital x clause must be a locative. The first must be a conjunction phrase. Let's look at the second clause. It's a vital clause, not a vital x. The last is a complement. The first is a conjunction. So let's see this. Yes, the last is the complement. The first is the conjunction. And so on. Here you see text information. Uh, the first clause is a narrative clause. So everything above the N is narrative. Everything, uh, everything between this N and this slot is a narrative. But then here we have obviously two words that are narrative uh, a quotation within a narrative, embedded in a narrative structure. So this is how the database is built. Um, now, obviously, you see there are so many codes and it's overwhelming. Um, you most likely are not going to use all codes, but you will regularly have to look up how codes are written. And I showed you already how you can basically Um, if you want to have the feature description open all the way, you can just click here on this link and bookmark it and here you have everything. It's nicely organized. It organizes this according to the different object types. For example, Word. Um, you can just click here on Word and then you see all the Word features on an autographic level, on a lexical level, uh, on a morphological level and, and so on. Okay. Um, what I do mostly is I use Shibank to look up um, the different values as I've shown you. Okay, third task for you is study the GCPC feature doc and find all object phrases in Genesis 20. So go to your feature doc, try to find all, um, uh, uh, try to find all phrases with the function object. So let's look here for phrase. Here, yeah, phrase functions, phrase features, phrase function, object. Here you have the code. So you can now tweak or write a query. You can just copy paste from previous query code codes and then uh, and just adapt it to uh, search for all object phrases in Genesis 20. Now, a valence um, is um, the concept of valence helps you to understand what verbs, particular verbs, are meaning in certain contexts. Um, I give you a couple of examples. For example, in English, when you say Peter runs a shop, it has a very different meaning than when you say Peter runs a marathon. Um, so what triggers the difference in meaning for run is the noun that follows. It's basically the object and the object phrase. If the object phrase is an economic entity, then run automatically means something different than if the object phrase is actually a word of distance. 
you can replace a marathon by any word of distance. Peter runs a 10K, a 5K, it always means something. Uh, it, it always triggers the meaning of a physical activity where you move your legs fast. If you have an economic entity, again, you can use any other word for an economic entity. It always triggers this idea of having a business. So run a shop, run a business, um, uh, run a grocery store. Um, yeah, it always triggers the same meaning. So uh, we could now look for, for example, the word lakach. The verb lakach in Genesis 20 verse 2 um, has where it says, and Abraham, no, Abimelech took, took Sarah. So what does that mean? So we could now say, search for all cases where lakach appears as a predicate and is connected to an object phrase. So now you see, we find all clauses where we have two phrases, a predicate phrase, an object phrase, and the object phrase, um, we don't specify that lexeme, so we, we see always what, what the object is. And he took the man, or and he took one of his ribs, is usually translated. Um, now we could say, in our case of Genesis 20, we have a female object. So let's say our object needs to be a specific word, namely a proper name, like Sarah or Abraham. But no, we don't want Abraham. We want to have that proper name, have the gender feminine, and must be singular. So now we find all cases in where a female person is being taken. I'm just showing here from the 13th result um, on. So what you see when you look at these results is Vaikach, then the female proper name, Jochebet, Le Isha, or Lo Le Isha. Vaikach, female proper um, name, Elisheva, Lo Le Isha. So, and he took uh, Elisheva for him as his wife. When you look at these results, this actually appears quite often, this uh, le isha uh, being followed here, le isha being followed, um, isha lo, isha um, lo isha, so here the le is missing, but um, but isha lo isha is, is there. Um, so we could ask and wonder, is there perhaps a certain pattern when you have lakach plus a female proper name plus leisha. Um, you will be able actually to establish a pattern and in Hebrew this construction basically means to marry. So in this task I'm just asking you to find these leisha um, constructions. Alter this query, it's your fourth task, alter this query in such a way that you're looking for complement phrases that contain the noun Isha, yeah, um, and then you can look at your data and suggest what type of meaning it actually is triggering for Lakach. Okay, as an assignment, you know, it's up to you, but you might want to construct two, three syntactical queries uh, and investigate, experiment with the database a little bit more. Uh, in our next session, we are going to look at um, relational operators available in Text Fabric. Um, once you understand relational operators, you can really build complex and very precise queries. All right, that's it for today. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Bye-bye.